Hi, I'm Stephen Hamm from Archery Supplies and we're going to try and shoot the Elite Ethos. It's a 70 pound bow, it's wound down maximum and my staff tell me it's 64 pounds. Now someone mentioned in my unboxing video about just putting bigger limb screws on here and you can't because this is what stops it here. These little screws on both sides, um, that's maxed out. So apparently this is on 64. Now I had trouble shooting a 60 pound PSE. Uh, I did wind it down one turn and I have done a video before where I couldn't pull back the bow and that was a prime. Uh, I couldn't pull it back at 60 pound. Um, so this is 64. I haven't, I don't think I've shot 64 pounds since my operation. So I am shooting about 52 pounds with a recurve. So this theoretically should be easy. Saying that, the Elite Verdict I shoot at 60 pounds doesn't hurt me and the PSE which I did at 58 really did hurt my chest. So we're going to give this a try at just drawing it back, we're at close distance. I fitted the CBE Tactics sight. This is interesting, so the pattern on, so CBE and Elite are the same company. Um, the Tactic pattern is down and the sight pattern is up so it's exactly opposite as a result you get really micro adjustability here in where you place the sight so I'm on the middle pin here and the furthest here I couldn't move it down any further because otherwise I'd touch there so let's see how I go at drawing this bow Oh, just, well, okay, we're going to take the shot. I'm very surprised. Like, when I do these videos, I just do them. I don't rehearse them, as you can probably tell. It's like, I want it to be a surprise. I didn't know if I was going to be able to draw it. Um, now what I'm going to say about the PSE draw cycle compared to the Elite, the PSE starts off really solid, which is why it hurt. This was, this was a bit easy to start with, and then for shooting recurve, I'm actually peaking back here. So this, back here I'm quite strong, up here I'm not very strong. So, um, so I can do a little bit of bench pressing at the moment, I'm doing... I think 20 30 kilos on bench press um, which is better since my operation these are 3d hv arrows so these are very very fast and that 400 spine for a 60 pound bow this is 64 pound the draw cycle i'm just going to explain it very impressed it drops into the valley pretty quickly but still i feel in control of it the whole time um, it's not like it's sort of lumping in, and it does lump in, but it's it's a bit smoother. It's not straight off. It's a little bit more rolling into the valley. Saying that, I think I would prefer the smooth mods having shot the smooth mods on the verdict. I am so impressed with the smooth mods that I would shoot that. Saying that, <laughs> these are the 90% mods. So 90% let off, so 64 pounds. When I get back here, I'm holding six pounds. That's what the 90% means. For me, I would shoot 75% let off, or the smooth mods. The reason I want more holding pressure back here, because if I do something wrong, I prefer to, I prefer the bow to be more in control. Um, the bow holds better in wind, the more, hold, more weight you're holding back. Saying that, I think hunters will probably prefer the 90% let off because they can just sit there and hold it all day. So, this is a very nice draw cycle. So, the grip, I like the balance. Um, so, the balance without the sight was perfect. Now that I put the sight on, it's a little bit front heavy. I like the grip, the grip feels the same as all the elites. Um, it feels no different. Like there is where it's getting heavy. And then it just drops in. Now I've got the K2 
cable stops, not the limb stops on, but it's very solid. There's no vibration, it feels quiet. It feels really, really good. Um, now, I assume the draw length hasn't been changed from the factory, and this factory set at 29 inches. Um, my staff did shoot this bow before me um, without a sign on it. Uh, they shot a couple of shots. Now, they're not over 29 inches in draw length, so I'm guessing they didn't adjust the modules. The bow feels slightly long, so I'm going to say it feels like 29 and a quarter inches. Look, this bow is fully adjustable in let off. So reducing the let off will reduce your draw length. So moving this draw stop forward will, will reduce your draw length because it's reducing the size of the valley. Um, and you've got full adjustability on draw length. So you can take, you know, a little bit off or whatever you want. But it's... Look, I'm going to shoot one of the target arrows. These are VXT, so these are heavier. 150 grain point at the front end. Um, we were having a conversation today about what hunters want, whether they want heavy arrows or whether they want light arrows. So the advantage of a light arrow is if you're judging a distance on an, on an animal, it's going to be quicker. As a result, you can be more out. So if you're using a rangefinder, it doesn't matter, but it's just flatter traje trajectory. But a heavier arrow has more hitting power. So. And we were saying there's a trend at the moment to shoot lighter arrows um, than heavier arrows. Although in Australia, um, a lot of people like heavier arrows for the, you know, the big pigs and the big buffaloes and the, the big, um, I'm going to say the scrub bulls. So there's a, I'm going to say there's a, you've got your deer shooters who are happy to shoot a light arrow. And then you've got your guys shooting the big animals who like the heavier arrows so that's the bit of the trend here target archers are generally heavier because it gives more wind stability oh look it's it's lovely it really is Okay, so I've shot all the elites before. Um, I spent a time last year with all the elites. So I had literally all the elites at home and I was shooting them all. I did reviews on them all to try and work out which elite I wanted to shoot. Um, I ended up liking the Envision and the Verdict. Okay, I really like the Remedy. And I was a bit tossed between whether to get a Remedy or get an Envision. I, env I ended up going with the Envision okay no real reason and I'm gonna guess without knowing the stats off the top of my head that the brace height was bigger on the Envision that's what I'm guessing because I felt like I shot fractionally better with the Envision I feel this is better than the Envision um, it's almost a seven inch brace height so I'm gonna guess I obviously have shot three arrows with this bow I'm going to guess it's going to be very stable to shoot at distance, which is what we're going to go and do now. Um, and I think it's quick, so I'm going to guess it's quicker than the Envision. It's going to be easier to shoot than the Envision, and also the peep's going to be closer to my eye, so it's going to give it a little bit more control than the peep sight further away. So when I say control, better vision, better vision through the peep. Um, so I think I'd prefer this without even shooting some arrows. But we're going to go and shoot some groups. We're going to go back to 18 metres and see how well we shoot. Okay, so I'm back at 18 metres, ready to shoot the Ethos. Now, getting my sight set was a bit of a nightmare. So I'll just say that. Now, I'm really happy with this sight from CBE. Adjusting it's just brilliant. So I'm just going to use this sight for all my reviews from now on because it just makes life easy. So... And it locks down really, really good sight. I'm not having a sales job on a CBE tactic. Just like makes my life easier and quicker. So that's what I liked about this and it's solid. So instead of using a $20 sight from now on in my reviews, I'll be just using a three pin, more expensive sight. It doesn't affect your accuracy, it just makes it quicker to set up, right? And then more durable. 
Okay, so it's windy. It's really windy and it's cold now, so I've got a jumper on. But it's really gusty. So I just shot with a recurve. I'm um, an indoor round at 18 meters here, and I shot one of my better scores, right? 284 out of um, 300 at 18 meters on a small face. And that's what we're going to be shooting at with this. And you're going to think, well, you should shoot better with the compound, right? Now, with the, with the recurve, and you're holding 50, 52 pounds at full draw, or 50 pounds at full draw, in the gusts, you don't get kicked around as much. With this, I'm going to get, I get kicked around everywhere in the wind. Because I'm holding six pounds, and I've got this weight out the front here, and I get kicked around, and look, what I found in my arrows which got sighted in, I hit, the one, I hit the 10 once, hit some red, so I don't know how this review is, review is going to go. And hopefully Elite won't hate me too much. But um, So what I found was I got kicked around a bit in the wind, so all over the place. But then my sight pin settled. And if I broke in the 10, it was good. Right? It's just having that confidence. Now... The draw length feels too long for me, so when I get back here, I don't feel like I'm locking in to the shot. I want to be holding more and breaking into the shot. So I want to, I want to be like, I'm just trying to get in the right spot. I want to be holding in the shot and then breaking through the shot. And I feel like the draw length's about half an inch too long to a quarter inch too long, and I just feel like I'm floating around here, and I feel that like that's giving me more inconsistencies. Okay, so. In my own shooting, I find a long drawing, draw length instead of a shorter draw length. I can shoot pretty well, well with a shorter draw length, but a longer draw length I find I flop around too much. And I don't have enough back tension in my back to execute good shots. So, again about me, not the bow. The bow felt brilliant to shoot, very happy with the way the bow shot. It felt, it felt fantastic to shoot, so let's shoot some shots. and see how it goes um, fingers crossed um, but the draw felt good no vibration in the shot the grip felt great the sight pin was steady when it wasn't gusting so hopefully I'll get some shots off where it's not gusting um, because it's it's a bit annoying trying to do a review And for me, this time, this is all in the way. I don't know why it had to happen, but this little thing, all in the way. Wasn't in the way for the sight settings. I'm trying to look around it. But very, I find it very hard to shoot high let off in the wind, okay? I just move around way too much. My front arm's fully extended. I like that front arm a little bit more relaxed in the shot. So I can have more sort of tension in my back. I just don't feel I've got the tension in my back. I want to feel, I want to feel my shoulder blades kind of working together and feel the muscles between my shoulder blades. Now that doesn't matter if you're shooting compound or recurve, you want to feel your muscles in your back. Now, if you're hunting, the advantage of a high let off, or let's say you're shooting 18 meters indoors, the advantage of, of a high let off is you're only holding six pounds, you can literally hold it all day. So, but I find I want to make the shot because I run out of breath. Um, so I want to get the shot off quicker rather than slower. That one felt great. I really like this bow. Like
I don't think I'm going to shoot it. And I've got no idea where they are as they're going. I've got a feeling I'm not going to shoot it as well as I've shot other reviews in the past, just because the draw length, the wind, <laughs> the wind's blowing a fair bit. So it's a bit cooler too. So I find I shoot better when it's warmer and my muscles work better in the warmth. So, but the bow itself, no vibration, feels really quick. So when I was sighting this bow in, just to so let you know how fast it is, so the target I shoot out here is foam, plastic, foam, right? I've had it for ages. Um, a lot of times the arrows are going straight through it. Um, I don't know if they're going through it now, so I had to move the target face around to get it to work. I was thinking about using the Bulldog target, but it's a pretty nice flat face. So I was like, well, if I can find a hard spot, but that's still going in a long way. The sight pin's very stable. I'm getting a little bit of a twitch. It's interesting, so sometimes I say when I aim, I get a little vibration. When I shot the Super, I got a little bit of vibration. I don't really get that with this. The sight pin's very stable. But when I move out of there, when I'm moving, I get a little bit of movement because it's only six pounds I'm holding. With more holding weight, so either moving the draw stop forward, so it hits earlier, I think I would shoot better with that. So just a bit more holding weight to get rid of that, you know, holding nothing back there. Um, but overall, I feel like it's really, really good and I'm probably going to be really disappointed when I get up there, but feels good. Now the other thing, I'm shooting a back tension release aid, and I've been shooting this, this is a Scott Ascent, I've been shooting it for about three years, um, maybe longer, same release aid. The thing about back tension release aid, it's using your back to make the shot, because my drawing is too long, my arm's kind of where I want it to go off normally, so it's harder for me to get the shot off without the, because the drawing is too long. And because I don't have the tension in my back, I find it harder to get the shot off as well. So, sounds like me making excuses, but it's not exactly how I want it. And the, it's so important to get the bow the way you want your bow, as far as just the draw length and all that. And when you're starting off as a beginner, it's very hard to know what you want, but that's where you try it, shorter, longer. And that's why I like a bow that's fully adjustable, in drawing and let off. Because you can experiment. If you buy, I'm gonna, I feel like I'm going to have a go at Matthews. If you buy a Matthews with modules, and you go, look, I want to try 65% module. Then you're going to go and buy a 65% module, and you go, oh, I really want to try the 75% module. You're going to go and buy the 75% module. No, I really like the 85% module. And then you like, so then you go back to the 85% module, so you've got three modules so far. Then you're like, oh, I'd really like it half an inch shorter. Now you need the half an inch shorter, and you need it on the 75%, 65% modules. And now I've got six sets of modules, all at $120 each, to see if I like the feel of it at all those different settings. With the Elite, or with other bows like your Bowtech and stuff, it's just a simple, and I'm going to say PSE as well, all your Hoyts. Hoyts, can you change the let off? Yeah, you can. Um, like, this is simple. It's very simple on the Elite, because the Elite gives you infinite adjustability. It's just such a good system. I can't stress it enough, because having the bow set up for you, and you being comfortable with the way something feels, is so important. Now, as a beginner, you won't know that, but as you shoot more and more and more, you'll be like, yeah, look, this is the way I want the bow to feel, and you can shoot scores and see it, and you can test it, shoot it for a month, test it, shoot something else for a month, test it. It's just, it's fantastic.
And like with this, I don't, I don't know if the draw length should be half an inch shorter, quarter of an inch shorter, because most modules come in half inches, or is it a full inch? Right, so with this bow or with a Bowtech or a bow that you can adjust the lead off and all that, you can experiment. Maybe I actually don't need the lead off shorter. Maybe I just need to draw, reduce the belly, right, and reduce the lead off, and that will make the bow feel how I want the bow to feel. It's really hard to know until you try stuff. That's what I love about a bow that's fully adjustable. It's to me, it's not even, a, you know, people go, I want this bow, I want this bow. What you want is a bow that's fully adjustable. That's what you want. A bow that you can do anything to and make it feel the way you want it to feel. That was a I heard that one in the middle because that was a really nice shot. The sight pin was just dead in the center, wasn't moving, the shot broke, the bow feels fantastic, there's no vibration. Now one of my friends, Olympian, arguably one of the greatest archers um, in Australia's history, and I said this when he brought his kids into my shop, he goes, oh that's not the case. I'm like, well you do own most of the Australian records in Australia, but anyway, whole different debate who's the greatest archer in Australia's history but and you know is it a bow hunter is it a target archer whatever right very good archer anyway he's going hunting this is the story he's going hunting he's got an 80 pound and it's a Hoyt right so he's got a Hoyt he used to be sponsored by Hoyt so he's got a Hoyt compound going hunting now the problem is his broadheads don't hit where his fill points hit and his broadheads are grouping like this at 40 meters now he could shoot better better than that with a recurve so he's bugging and he's got a hunting trip tomorrow where he's going up to far of north, far of Australia to hunt big game, right? And, um, and he's gripping like this. So what he does, he comes to the shop and gets some longer veins. So then he's back in the shop the day before the hunt, like getting ready, because the thing's not working. I go, how did the veins work? He goes, pull the group tighter than with blazer veins. So that was a stealth. Um, because they give more steering because they're longer, right? So more steering, um, so tighter groups. However, the broadheads are still out to the left of the field points. And he goes, I've tried shimming the cams, I've tried doing this. And he goes, so now I'm trying different arrows. With an elite, with an elite, I'm gonna say a Bowtech, that stuff to, to do is seconds, seconds. And he would have been stuffing around all day and got nowhere and was like, I give up. I'm just going to buy some new arrows and I'm just going to throw those arrows in the bin and those broadheads in the bin and buy new broadheads and new arrows. I, and I don't know if that worked because he had two hours or few, a couple of hours to go until he was heading off on a plane without arrows really set up and he had to sight it all in and all that sort of stuff. That's the beauty of this boat, like full adjustability. And it's easy, you don't need a bow press, just go shoot and everything's easy. It's so easy to set up, so easy to tune, change the whole feel of the bow. Just, I sound like I'm a walking, I feel like I'm, Peter, I'm PJ O'Reilly right now, right with the Elite Review, although I'm not getting paid to shoot Elite and all that sort of stuff, but it's just, and I can say that with Bowtech as well, just all the adjustability, all the adjustability and tunability is what you want in a bow. Might be okay. Broke a little bit to the right. There's a bit of wind kicking me around. Um, now you say, why aren't you including PSE? Because with PSE, you need a bow press to do the shimming and stuff. And it's not as easy as the Elite or the Bowtech to tune. So, but the problem he had, and he's like, well, I didn't know what to do. And I did my research and some were saying this and some were saying that. 
easy with this. Seconds, and you would have been able to fix it. That was interesting. Some people said to him that it's due to the due to him shooting an 80 pound bow and having a massive draw length and shooting shooting heavy arrows, but he's pumping out 310 feet per second. And they were saying that because of, you've got high speed, that it's causing the broadhead to do the, the to do the guiding instead of the vein doing the guiding, and that's causing it to shoot off to the left. So anyway, I don't know how he went off. I'm sure I'll hear shortly once I get my access back to Facebook because I'm currently banned. So I've been hacked on Facebook and I've been banned for three days off Facebook. So if you've been sending me a message, I haven't been responding because I can't respond because I'm banned at the moment for three days. Not that I did anything, I didn't do anything, okay? So I'm not going, I did something because I didn't. I got hacked somehow. I know lots of friends are getting hacked at the moment. Um, and yeah, they've banned me. Like, I've got my account back now, but it's I'm not allowed to post anything for three days, so I can't message anyone. And I can't post for three days. I can see things, but I can't respond. So I can't even go, yeah, like. Doesn't let me do that. So, anyway, this boat felt beautiful. Let's go and check the group. The group is pretty good, except for this one, which is almost a miss. Um, in fact, I think the group's better than what I'd expect it to be. I cannot stress enough how important it is to have the bow set up for you, um, to be, and when I say set up, I'm not talking about drop away IRS, I'm shooting a $15 whiskey biscuit, um, no peep side and all that sort of stuff, and it's windy, so it'd be kind of interesting to see where this shot happened, whether it was a gust or something, I just think it was probably a bad, none of the shots felt bad, I just don't feel I've got my... I don't feel like my form's correct enough, if that makes sense. I feel like I'm overextended. I want to be this elbow. I want to be there, and it's back here already. So it's too far activated in the shot, if that makes sense. So I want to activate the shot into the shot, and I think it's already activated, if that makes sense. Anyway, it's so important to ex experiment with stuff, is what I'm telling you. Um, I'm really happy with the ethos. Um, I'm really happy with the group. Now, I shot lots of the Elite Bows last year. I shot the Remedies. I shot all the Envisions. I shot Encores and all that, which are all lovely bows, right? They're all lovely. I shoot a verdict at the moment, okay? Because I'm just like... I think it's one of the best target bows at the moment, right? I'm not having to go at any other brands or what. It's just... The grip feels comfortable for me. I seem to aim it really well. It draws back really well. So that's why I'm shooting that. Now, of all the elites I've shot, I am happy with the ethos. Okay, so it's not like I'm going to swap my verdict for the ethos. Right, so that's not going to happen. However, I would swap my envision for an ethos. I would be interested to shoot some target scores within ethos because i like the way it feels i like the fact that the bow's lighter than the verdict um i like the speed of the ethos i would like the ethos with um smooth draw modules and even 75 percent modules i'd probably go for smooth over the 75 although it's hard to know because I've shoot it around 65% let off, so do I really want the 75 or do I want the smooth mods? But anyway, I would definitely prefer the other mods. Happy with this mod, but I just prefer it smoother. Having shot the smooth mods, there's no question I want smooth mods. Um, I think the weight's good. The weight of the bow is excellent compared to all the other bows on the market. It's the lightest of them, so huge tick. The draw cycle I'm very happy with and it's better if you go for smooth mods. I think it will be the best draw on the market if you've got the smooth mods. The Bowtech SS34 is regarded as the best draw cycle in the market. And I'm going to say you fit the smooth mods to this and I think it's going to be every bit as good as the SS34. Okay. Um, the balance is excellent. The vibration is excellent. The noise is excellent. The tunability is excellent. The adjustability is excellent. 
The price point is currently in Australia, it's the cheapest of the bows in its class. Now that price that I did in the video um, might be going up because the Australian dollars dropped since I last priced an elite bow. And so I think the Australian dollars dropped from 65, 66 cents to about 63 cents. And I don't know how much this bow increased in America by, and I don't know how much my freight was of the bow in, but it might go up a little bit, but still, it will still be the cheapest bow in its class, I think, or maybe the Fortis will be the cheapest, but I've had that discussion already about the Fortis and all the other bows, so I'm happy with the price point. I really like the paint finish on the Elites. I really like the color options. I like the accessories that they fit to it. And I'm going to say, well, on Matthews and Hoyt's defense, you've probably got better accessories than Elite um, as far as how, how it bolts in and things. Like they have two-piece quivers. Elite don't have a two-piece quiver and stuff like that. Like someone mentioned in the comments, the inline system. I'm not a big fan of the inline system, but I know Hoyt shooters are. And I probably know Matthew shooters are. Um... I'm not a big fan because you limit yourself to the products you can buy, right? Um, so currently, if you want an inline sight, you're going to be buying Excel um, rather than you know some other sites on the market. And then when you want to move from one bow to another, you you know you need an inline system. I think it would be simple for Elite to fit an inline system, and like PSE did, they just bolt it to the front of the riser. And I didn't like the look of it. I didn't like, I liked the way the Elite Riser looks. You could easily adapt one on the back of the arrow rest, but then how many arrow rests are inline systems? Um, I just don't think the inline system gives you enough to make it worthwhile. But maybe it's a trend that will come, and I do understand why people like it because it keeps the bow more square. I don't know, like, I'm just not a big fan. I like the whole thing that every sight's the same and every bow I move to, I can just take the sight and bolt it on. But I do know that there are people who like inline stuff. So, you know, it's something you could think about. Elite could think about building a little bracket on the back of the rest, building a bracket on the front of the bow. I don't know, like, yeah, maybe. But I like the way the bow looks. I like the paint finishes. I like the colours. Price point's good, grip's good, the finish is good, the warranty's good. I think it's a winner. Um, and I think it would have to rate as currently my favourite hunting bow. And there's lots of amazing bows on the market, but I just think you've got all that stuff. And I feel like I'd have to go and shoot, you know, some of the others. Yeah, just saying that, just saying that. I really liked the Carbon Elite era, really liked that bow, but I would choose the Ethos because without seeing all the stats, I think the Brace Height's better, I think the Axle Axle's better, um, and it's just more, I'm going to say it's more robust. Not that there's something wrong with the Carbon, the Carbon's lighter and I really like the Carbon bow because it is lighter, it just feels robust, like it just It'll be there in 10 years. I don't have to worry about it. So, I think it's a, for me, it's definitely a bow I will look at adding to my range, my collection, after shooting this review, with the smooth mods and doing some more shooting, maybe doing some field shooting, and maybe doing some 3D shooting with it. Um, and I will note, lots of people use the verdict for 3D shooting um, and hunting. But I just like the weight, I like the feel of this bow. Um, so I think Elite's done a good thing, and I don't think they did much. And I'm, I feel like I'm taking stuff away from Elite. Like, you took a bow which was 31 inches, which was successful, and you've gone, let's make it in 33 inches. Do you know what you should have done further? You should have gone, let's make it in 35 inches. And then I would have take, taken the 35 inch version. But Anyway, I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. Look, if you're looking at buying a bow, I fully suggest, like, if you go, look, these are the two top bows I like, try and have a shot with them. People come to my shop and go, look, you know, to have a shot. 
and it takes about an hour to set up a boat, adjust draw length and all that, and we go, well, that'll cost $50. Um, we'll take it off the price of the bow if you know, if you buy the bow. And they're like, nah, which means you're not serious, because it's like, if we're going to take an hour of our time to set up a bow, and give you a shot, and you don't buy it, I think it's fair enough. But anyway, that's my view. Um, so that's what we do now in our shop, where before we used to be like, yeah, try that, and then person would be like, I want to try that bow, that bow, that bow, that bow, that bow. And it's like, no, you get to shoot a couple of shots and that's it. Um, because just too much time spent, people trying all these different bows. And that's what we do in these reviews. That's why we do them for you. You can see how they shoot and hopefully it's an honest review. I think this is good. And it'd be interesting to compare the Ethos to the Era to see which one I prefer. Um, and shoot them back to back but both very very good bows but I like the grip on this I think better than the era so I would choose this bow so anyway I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies thanks for watching bye